Hey everyone, this is May Park. Welcome to another video tutorial on my YouTube channel and my blog. Today I'm going to show you how to create a watercolor card using the watercolor stamping technique. This video will be a bit different than usual as I'll share the entire process of how I decide my card design and supplies. As usual, I'll share the behind the scenes video at the end to show you my craft desk after my project is done. So make sure to watch the video until the end. A few days ago, I got a happy mail from Alex Siberia. She's been a guest designer in the all to new release blog house for the past several months. I'm a big fan of her work, so I was so excited to see her beautiful cars in real life. I believe she used alcohol markers and ink sprays on her cards, but I was under the impression that she watercolored images for some reason. That's how I decided to create a watercolor card for this video. Then I pulled out one of my favorite stamp sets from All to New, which is the Wildflower Garden stamp set. The images in this set allow you to mix and match flowers and stamps for creating your own garden of wildflowers. I thought the solid images in this set are perfect for the watercolor stamping technique that I'm going to give it a try in today's video. Here is one of my favorite cards that I create using the Wildflower Garden stamp set. I love how all of the images are well balanced together on the stamped background. So I will use this card design as my stamping guide for the placement of each image. I really love the loose watercoloring on the floral images from all to new painted fantasy washi tape. I'll try to achieve the look of loose watercoloring with a watercolor stamping technique. So I got the coloring medium idea from Alex's cards, the image placement guide from my stamped background card, and the color palette inspiration from the floral washi tape. Trying the watercolor stamping technique has been on my to-do list for a long time. And I'm so excited that I'm finally giving it a go today. I already cut my watercolor paper into four and a half and six inches out of Canson Excel 140 pound cold pressed watercolor paper. I cut my watercolor paper larger than regular A2 size just because I might need to trim off the edge in case I make a mistake. Then I placed my watercolor paper inside my original misty stamping tool and use the magnets to hold the paper in place. One of the reasons I'm using the stamping tool is that I wanted to add some depth and texture by adding different colors for each stamping while I stamp the image on the same position. Next, I'm going to choose my ink colors from all to new crisp dye ink collection inspired by the color combination from the painted fantasy wash tape. Since I'll be mixing the ink colors to create my own colors, I will only need 5 or 6 ink pads. After placing my stamps on the watercolor paper, I'm going to pick up the stamps with a misty door. Then I'll be inking up my stamps with alternate forest glaze ink. Next, I'm going to spritz my stamps with a water spray. To get a better result, you need to use a fine spray so you don't spray your ink away. Then I'm going to stamp the images onto my watercolor paper. I'm going to use a baby wipe to remove the ink on the stamp before I move on to the next color. That way, I don't transfer the previous ink color to another ink pad. This time, I'll be inking up my stamps with all to new maple yellow ink. I'm only applying my ink to the top of my stamps as I wanted to create a slight color transition on my images while two colors mix together on the same areas. Then I will slightly coat my stamps with a layer of moisture by misting it with the water using my water spray. I'm going to repeat the same process until I create a field of white flowers on the entire panel. Inking, misting, stamping, and inking again. If you are a beginner at this watercolor stamping technique, I recommend you choose a large image as tiny images can get lost depending on the amount of water you add. To get more controlled results, I'm inking a stamp and misting it with water before stamping. If you want to get more of a bleeding effect, you can also ink up your stamp with ink and stamp it and then mist it over the stamped image. Or you can mist water onto your watercolor paper before stamping. 
every result will be different. By the way, I'm stamping the images on the 2C side of my watercolor paper as it helps me add more texture on my watercolor images. If you want more crisp stamping, you can use the smooth side of watercolor paper. If your stamped image has too much water on it, you can dab away the water with a paper towel. If you want to fix your stamping, you can pick up the colors with a paper towel and stamp it again. It will also create the look of shadow stamping. For today's technique, I chose Alton inks because they are water-based, so the inks react with water well. Instead of inks, you can also use the water-based markers. Just apply your markers directly on the stamps and mist it with water, and then stamp the images. I recommend you start with lighter colors first, so you have enough room to add more colors later. Depending on how you coat your stamps with water, you will get a different result every time you stamp. Just be careful not to apply too much water at once. You can always add more water later if needed. Once my stamping is done, I'm going to color the entire background. I will use my alternate inks again and start water coloring within the images using watercolor wash technique. Please make sure that you start with a good amount of water on your paintbrush to achieve more organic look. Once you are done with the first layer, you can apply darker colors here and there to get more interesting look. Then I'm going to dry my panel with a heat tool to speed up the drying time. The main stamp image got lost along the way, so I'm going to stamp the image one more time to enhance the image. Then I'm going to use my wet paint brush to go over my stamped image to get an organic look. To complete my background, I'm going to splatter the background with alton inks. When you choose the colors for your splatter background, it's safe to choose the colors from the color palette you used for your floral images. You can also flick the water onto the watercolor panel with your fingers or paintbrush and dab up water splatters with a paper towel to create some subtle texture. If you want to create more small controlled splatters, you could pick up the ink using a small paintbrush and tap the body of your paintbrush with your fingers. If you don't like the colors mixing together, make sure to dry the previous splatters using heat tool before you add the next splatters with a different color. I'm splattering the same ink around the image which was stamped with the same color. I just wanted to create some movement of my images by using the same color for ink splatters. Once my background is done, I'm going to dry my panel again using a heat tool. However, I recommend you set your pen aside for about 10 minutes to let it air dry. Then your splatters will dry so beautifully without breaking out. Then I asked my husband to give me feedback on my watercolor panel. My husband is a designer, so he always has his own opinion, and he's not generous with compliments when it comes to my cards. I know you can understand Korean, but I'll share what he said for just for fun. Oh, so cute. So I decided to start over. This time I chose the Timur's watercolor paper, which is wider than Kenson watercolor paper. I'm using the same watercolor stamping technique, but I decided to leave the background white. Then I started adding some simple doodles on my stamped images out of the blue. Of course, it turned out terribly, even though I was only adding some lines and circles. Yes, I'm not good at doodling at all. Since I was desperate to complete the card, I came back to my previous panel. I only trimmed off the edge of my watercolor panel to make an A2 size. I'll be mounting my watercolor panel on an A2 size top folding white card base using double sided tape. Now it's time to open my sentiment. I'm going to pull out two sentiment stamps from all to new. I'm placing two stamps on the card front temporarily to decide where to stamp. By the way, the big size sentiment is from the Crafted Life stamp set, and the small size sentiment is from the Beautiful Inside stamp set. 
mixing different sides of sentiments can draw people's attention as it looks more interesting. I'm lining up my stamps in straight using the grid lines on the misty door. Next, I'm going to ink up my stamps with alternate new permanent black ink and stamp the sentiments onto the card front. Since I'm stamping on the watercolor paper, it's hard to get intense impression because of the texture from the watercolor paper. So I'm going to stamp a couple more times until I get intense black impression. Next, I'm stamping the sentiment inside my card and on the back of my card using the Crafty Life stamp set again. I illustrated this stamp set with the fun phrases and sentiments for all you paper crafters out there in mind. To add more finished look, I'm going to create a frame by adding four black lines along the edges of my card front. Then I'm going to place my card under some heavy books overnight to make it flat. I really love how my card turned out. I'm glad I didn't give up on my watercolor panel. And my husband was surprised that adding the sentiment and small details on the card can make a big difference. The watercolor stamping technique is a great way to get beautiful watercolor results with very little effort. If you haven't tried it yet, I strongly recommend you give it a go. It is a super easy stamping technique that gives you the look of watercolor. Anyone can achieve the great watercolor look of hand-painted images while you are using stamps and inks. This is it for today. I hope this video tutorial inspires you to create a card using the watercolor stamping technique. If you enjoyed my video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you haven't done it yet, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so you won't miss any new videos from me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time with another video. Bye bye.